So good evening, everyone. Welcome to our virtual academic session with data science. I love the background, <laughs> so that's great. My name is Emily Bucco. I'm one of the counselors that works here in the admissions office at WPI. Thrilled to welcome all of you here this evening. I'm gonna let um, our featured guests here introduce uh, themselves and then we are going to get started. I am recording this session, so it will be available for everyone to view after we are done tonight, but we're thrilled to have you guys here. We are using the webinar format in Zoom, so you can see us, um, but we can't see you. Um, what we have done is enable the Q&A, so as the presentation progresses, please feel free to throw any questions into the Q&A. We've got a whole panel of people who can help answer those questions. The goal is to finish up somewhere around 7.45, um, but certainly plenty of time for Q&A uh, throughout the, the presentation, so just want to make sure everyone knows that. That said, I'm going to turn things over to, I don't know, uh, Professor Lynn, if you want to go first, um, we'll do introductions and then get started from there. Sure, yeah, I can introduce uh, first and then we can kind of hop over. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Lane Harrison. I'm an associate professor uh, in data science and computer science here at WPI. I've been here maybe six years, I think. Um, my work is in visualization, so if you've ever made a chart, uh, that's something I care about deeply. We make interactive visualization systems. We study interactive visualization systems and uh, happy to talk with you about data science tonight. Uh, I will tag Elke. Okay. Hi, my name is Elke Rundensteiner. I'm a faculty in computer science. I'm the founding director of this data science program that you're listening to now. Um, research, how long have I been at WPI? I cannot count. More than took my hands and my feet, so 25 years or longer. Um, it's a great place. Um, research areas, I've looked at a large variety of different things from machine learning to visual analytics to large scale data processing, anything data I'm interested in. So I'm pretty broad in terms of areas. Um, and I'm glad to answer any questions you may have. So thank you. Miranda, would you like to go next? Hi everyone, my name is Miranda. I am a master's student. I am actually graduating in a month and presenting my thesis next week. Um, Professor Rinstein is actually my advisor and Professor Harrison is the reader for my thesis. So great group we have going here. Um, if you have any questions at the end about the research that I have done both as an undergrad, I did my undergrad at WPI or um, as a master's student, feel free to let me know at the end. All right, all right. Should we switch over to slides now, Emily? Let's do it. If you're ready, we can go for it. All right, let me get a few things moved around here. Mm -hmm. You know how it is on Zoom. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> all right, can everyone see that okay? Yeah, looks good. Yes, we can. All right, great. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, here we have a short presentation on uh, WPI and the data science program. Uh, I'm not Professor Elke Runensteiner, but Elke is here if you have any questions for the, the director, uh, but I'll take you through a spin through uh, WPI data science today. Um, first, uh, who we are. So you, we've already done a little bit of introductions. We have listed here a couple of other students who occasionally join us for these types of uh, talks, um, but most importantly, uh, our email addresses, so you can reach out and contact us if you have any questions, uh, that sort of thing. We would definitely be up for that. I know I did a session last week uh, on the WPI campus and received several questions afterwards, so uh, please don't be shy. Uh, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. So I, the first thing, congratulations, you've been admitted to WPI. I, I was just thinking it's been 15 years since I was in your shoes. Uh, making similar decisions uh, about where I wanted to go. And at that point in time, uh, I, there was no option for data science. So it's kind of exciting to, to be on, uh, you know, interested in a field that's sort of on its cusp. I found it by accident, uh, but you can do it deliberately. So data science, what do you actually do with the uh, data science degree? Well, you make data useful. You turn it into insights and tackle difficult problems. Uh, data is everywhere in every organization you can imagine now, uh, from social media, you've got clicks and likes and social networks and all types of analyses that you can perform there. Uh, in mobile apps, oh my goodness, our, our phones that we have here 
are our little sensor powerhouses. This one even has like a little laser sensor on it now, a LiDAR, which you're going to try to use for augmented reality applications later on. Or if you have, a, like I have here, this little ring that's got, you know, a, little, a computer chip in it that tells me how well I'm sleeping. So all of our mobile devices are producing tons of data. And, and to be honest, the applications of them aren't that advanced yet. So there's still lots of room for improvement, especially as sensors continue to improve. There's going to be so many opportunities in that space. Uh, at the upper right here, I'm just kind of channeling medicine. Uh, obviously, medicine has got, undergone like a, a huge medicine and healthcare, huge changes over the past decade. Many things are digitized now, new types of research and analysis and business opportunities coming about. And honestly, Massachusetts proper is one of the leaders in this area. If you look around Massachusetts, we have the, the UMass Medical School down the road and a lot of healthcare startups, actually. Uh, infrastructure. So bottom left, you know, we care about infrastructure. Easy Pass in Massachusetts is producing a lot of data. People learn about the uh, infrastructure in their communities that way. And also even uh, cities. So the city of Boston has a, a data website. The city of Worcester uh, has a junior data website. I would call it not as advanced as Boston, but they're getting there. And then at the bottom right, something that's kind of unique to WPI is uh, advanced manufacturing. So we've got a lot of faculty that's interested in, in, in these areas. There are a lot of opportunities. I was actually um, a, a couple of weeks ago talking to a student who's working for an advanced manufacturing company. He's a data science student. And uh, while well, he, he said that he can't tell me exactly what he works on, uh, but it has something to do with computer vision uh, on the uh, products that the, the company produces. And uh, you know, after talking with him about it, it seems like this is a very lucrative area to be in, improving manufacturing as uh, one of those, uh, you know, it, it might not sound the most exciting, you know, not as exciting as social media, but it's definitely needed in a good growth area. So a more popular uh, representation of, of data in society, um, data and sports analytics. So if you've uh, heard of this, this phrase, Moneyball. So Moneyball, uh, it's not just a movie, it's a real story. So Billy Bean worked for the uh, Oakland A's and uh, essentially put together a record-breaking season on a budget. And the way that Billy Bean did that is through data. So whereas, you know, the Boston Red Sox and the Yankees, they have these massive budgets. They'll send scouts out and look for the players that have that real star quality. You know, the, the, the Jeters and the, you know, the big poppies. Uh, I couldn't even name an Oakland A's player. Uh, but what Billy Bean did is looked at the stats. He looked at the data. He used advanced modeling and completely changed the game. Uh, so Moneyball been the subject of a book, uh, of a movie. Uh, and honestly, they inspired a lot of work uh, in sports analytics since then. Uh, I know we have some WPI students. I don't know if we can say what team, but there's a major sports team uh, talking to the, uh, the students about working on uh, data analytics projects with them. And at the lower level, you have things like the, the Woo Sox in town uh, that are also trying to get into that game. So... You know, if we haven't convinced you already, who needs data scientists? It really is everyone. So uh, you solve problems that would otherwise remain on, unsolved or only using intuition. So a lot of times in, in business and in industry, um, people are still kind of solving problems based on their, their gut, what they're seeing in you know, reports and information. Uh, but this can be done. It can be made uh, more rigorous through, through data or at least backed up and justified. Uh, one example that we see is in local healthcare. So I've talked to local health healthcare companies, so not really big hospital systems, but local healthcare in Massachusetts. Uh, they really struggled to make use of their case claims data uh, that they're using to, to uh, manage treatment plans with their patients. So that's like a, a smaller opportunity, but they, they're in dire need of data scientists to help them do this well. Uh, you know, we, we always care. I remember 15 years ago, I was thinking about economic outlook. Will I be able to go to college and actually get a job that, that makes, you know, some sort of decent salary? Uh, so, so data science, um, you know, very nice statistics here. The median base salary, not the average. I don't want to do a, you know, a lecture on what the median is versus what the average is, but the median salary here, $108,000 is a pretty nice. So if you can reach that six figure level, uh, especially in a few years after starting out. So as a student, uh, you know, our students kind of 
uh, grow, develop their identity as data scientists, specialize in certain types of tools, maybe certain types of big data technologies. Uh, you can really move laterally throughout the industry. Um, I can remember a couple of students in my classes that are now working at places like LinkedIn and Twitter, uh, and they're, they're certainly within that range. Um, kind of switching over to the program. So how do we make this all work uh, here at WPI? So uh, data science is a new and emerging area, really is interdisciplinary. So uh, the industry has recognized that, you know, you can't just be a computer scientist because computer scientists honestly don't know that much math and statistics. We're pretty good at it. I'm saying we, because I'm a computer scientist that had to learn math and stats along the way. We're pretty good at it, but we're not as good as the people in the math and stats department. And that similarly goes, you know, can we talk about the value of the applications or the, the thing that we're coding on for, for weeks on end? Uh, so there's really an interdisciplinary effort. So, so we need computing. Uh, and we need math statistics, and we need uh, to be able to talk about the value of our work from a business perspective. So uh, WPI does have a, a history of data science. So we're looking back eight years ago, uh, we developed the, the master's degree. We had one of the first PhD programs in the, the country. That was one of the things that brought me here to WPI seeing that. I was like, oh, they move fast. Uh, so one of the first PhDs in data science uh, in the entire US. And then we started work on the, uh, the undergraduate degree. Uh, so that's something that we released in 2020. And uh, we've got our first batch of students uh, who have already gone through uh, and begun to graduate. So uh, unique things about the WPI program in general. So one thing you'll uh, you definitely hear of during orientation are things like seven week terms. So a little bit more rapid, uh, but in depth, you focus on only three courses at a time instead of the typical five. Uh, which can be nice. Uh, wide selection of courses. It's worth mentioning that WPI doesn't have prerequisites. So if you feel comfortable uh, in your freshman year taking a senior level class, you can absolutely do that. And I have had that happen. I've had, usually teach senior level classes and I've had some freshmen come in that were very comfortable with web programming and they just started right away in uh, one of my courses and did really well. Uh, Project-based courses. So this is another thing that I do as a visualization person. You know, it helps to talk about the theory, but people don't want to learn about color theory and perception. They want to make visualizations. So one of the things we do in our, our courses is uh, we make sure that they're project-based so that students have artifacts that they can put on their resume, uh, like an interactive visualization system in my case, uh, so that that can help them be more competitive in the, the job market and give them their experience, uh, you know, that they would like to, to specialize in. Uh, frequent course offerings, so we're going to offer uh, especially data science courses very frequently so you can get started. Uh, and then the, uh, the projects and the, the BSMS program, so we'll talk about projects in a moment, but the BSMS program uh, is very popular for a lot of students to go through in four years and in their fifth year pick, pick up their masters. Some students even try to squeeze it in in four years if they have a lot of AP credits or four and a half. Um, that's certainly possible. We can answer those questions as well. Uh, so, so educational outcomes, so we've hinted on this, but to really drive it home, interdisciplinary skills. So we need to, to know how to do analytics. Uh, we need to know how to do that through computing. So it's not just, you know, through equations, but we need to be able to make that computational so it can scale. Uh, we also need to be able to uh, communicate our results and uh, talk about them from a, a business perspective. Uh, so in terms of data science specifically, we want to, to be able to use uh, the technology that industry is actually using. Uh, so that's one of the things that you'll see in data science courses. You're going to be using things like R and Python, which are industry standard, uh, as well as uh, concepts and sort of state of the art, because we are a research institution as well. Uh, we not only teach the undergraduates, but we also, uh, a lot of the professors have a role in actually shaping the state of the art publishing and research conferences about what it's going to look like in the, the next 10, 20 years. Uh, and then, of course, the business know-how. So this is not meant to, uh, to scare you, or maybe just a little bit. Um, it, it, we want to scare you with how many courses there are. Uh, so this is the, the flow chart for a uh, data science major. So there are a lot of options and paths through the program. Uh, that's what you can take away here. And there are a lot, 
a lot of things that you could do. So looking down here, we can see bio visualization. That's one thing that I teach uh, here from the business perspective, user experience design. These are some of the you know, interesting 4,000 level courses. Uh, here's a great one, data analytics and statistical learning. But if we just jump up in the middle, you know, probability for applications, that's gonna be something that uh, all data science students are gonna need to, to take and learn. Things like business data management, data management, talking about that from a business perspective, so important, as well as things like, uh, you know, database management, learning that from the, the more theoretical and practical perspective. Uh, other courses here worth mentioning, software engineering, if you're, you have the aptitude for programming, that's a great one as well. But, you know, we can certainly talk about these uh, and we'll make these slides available. Uh, a couple of additional advanced courses, data access and management, software engineering, we already mentioned, uh, different types of statistical and machine learning. Uh, so if you want to run the, the deep neural networks, that's certainly a part of the WPI curriculum. Uh, different aspects of artificial intelligence, we have courses specifically on AI. Uh, business modeling and prediction, so using maybe simpler models, but using them in a business setting. So if you have to explain a linear regression to the, the CEO, uh, that would be uh, sort of around that line. And the visual analytics, something more like I would do is you know, making all these things visual. Ah, so, uh, you know, MQP projects, one of the, the crowning features of WPI. Uh, next week is our MQP project presentation day. I'm excited about that. Uh, faculty advisors work with teams of three to four students. This is where you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction with a, a professor or even an organization. Uh, and you work on a year-long project. So uh, my project started actually last summer, some of them. Uh, students wanted to, to start their projects then. So we work on, uh, in my case, research projects. In a, the case of an organization, you might work on an organization's data set. Sometimes there are you know, NDAs involved, but if there are NDAs involved, that means you're working on organization data that can lead to job opportunities. Uh, so there's uh, a lot to the MQP projects. Um, it can be, you know, fun to do this. Uh, it's also challenging in a professional sense because you're working with a team uh, and you're really working on something uh, that's going to kind of be a capstone to your experiences where you're taking all of the things that you learned in your major and applying them on a real world project. A couple of project sponsors, um, you may see some familiar names here, Kayak, you know, the, the travel search website, Pfizer. Uh, definitely popular these days, uh, and, and several others here. These are folks that have uh, sponsored WPI projects uh, at the, um, uh, in data science at the graduate and undergraduate levels. We have a slide freeze. So many project sponsors, it broke my slides. Give me a second. Okay, there we go. Uh, a couple of example MQP projects. Uh, beating Cancer with Natural Language Processing, that was with the Dana-Farber Cancer Center. Uh, aircraft Health Predictive Analytics, sponsored by IBM. IBM obviously has their fingers in everything, but one in particular that we worked with was Aircraft, aircraft Health Predictive Analytics, sorry, it's hard to say, uh, which is obviously of importance. Um, and then uh, wearable sensors, you know, we talked about our phones earlier. Uh, you've got some uh, sponsored work working on that as well. You can imagine, you know, uh, a pharmaceutical company might be interested in, you know, how a person is is moving around uh, in terms of, you know, activity recognition and how that might relate to health. So, you know, as a student, you have to think not only about your years, uh, you know, in the fall and spring semesters, uh, but also your summers. So one thing that we do here at WPI, uh, in addition to internships, so the WPI has a, a project center that, that connects you with uh, internships and they have a, a big, um, what do we call it, career fair every year uh, where they've got uh, companies coming in talking about internships. One thing the data science program does in particular is the uh, research experience for undergrad site. So this is where uh, data science students can work with a professor for 10 weeks over the summer. Uh, usually, you know, the students are going to work uh, together. So, you know, all of these students are going to be working with different professors, uh, but they get to do uh, activities together, like going to MathWorks or MITRE, uh, in addition to what they do over the summer. Uh, so a couple of considerations about community. Um, so data science is rapidly growing. There are lots of ways that you can get involved. At WPI, we have campus student organizations. Uh, I, the data science events and the data science, I would say Slack, but 
It's actually, we should mark that out. Now I've heard from undergrad students, the Discord is the place where, where folks wanna be social. So they've made a data science Discord uh, in addition to social media. Uh, another strategic decision here is uh, you know, proximity to things in the greater Boston area. So there's a lot of companies in between here and Boston and occasionally they have meetups. So meetups are where they might be talking about a particular Python framework or you know, some sort of uh, you know, neural network uh, you know, concept. Uh, and these are basically like one-off lectures where uh, different enthusiasts from different companies come out to, to talk about these. Uh, one in particular, I remember the Boston Machine Learning Meetup had thousands of members, uh, at least pre-pandemic, who knows what they're doing these days. Um, but that's something to look at as well. And then beyond WPI, uh, you know, from the under, undergrad perspective, you can look at things like data science conferences, online communities, social media, and GitHub to get involved beyond what you're doing in your courses. A couple of more societies. So uh, because there are a lot of overlap between computer science and data science, some data science students uh, join the, the CS uh, UPE uh, uh, mock interviews and types of things that they do because there's overlap in those types of interviews that you would get to. Uh, WPI hosts the Women in Data Science Symposium. Uh, we have the Coffee Clatch community that is completely student run. Uh, so they're not really coffee and enthusiasts. They just you know say it's about coffee and they talk about data science. Uh, we have the student council, which is more of you know sort of a faculty interfacing uh, group, and then the data science club, which is again completely student driven. Uh, several members in the data science club. I'm the advisor. I see requests each week, so uh, they're, they're running events all the time. Uh, a, a couple last thoughts here before we get into the Q and A. So wind up those questions there. Uh, WPI support for data science. Um, well, we we are hiring faculty all the time. I don't think we can announce who, but we just hired another data science faculty uh, that we're excited about. Um, so we're, we're getting new people to teach new types of courses and new research areas, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, we have an industrial advisory board. So some of those project sponsors that you saw before, we have uh, several representatives from different uh, areas of industry uh, on our advisory board. Uh, and um, probably most notably, there's a new building on campus. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's gorgeous. Unity Hall. It's actually not Unity Hall. Unity Hall is even newer than this new looking building. Uh, Unity Hall uh, houses uh, uh, data science study rooms and data science faculty. It's very active. I get to have meetings there every week. Uh, so that's certainly something worth checking out. And uh, in closing, please feel free to reach out. Like I said, uh, last week I ran this. I had several uh, folks reach out with some questions afterwards uh, and during the Q&A session now. So we, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, but let's turn it over to, uh, to Q&A. You can ask questions of, of us and Miranda. And uh, yeah, I think we'll be good. Awesome. Thank you, Elaine. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'm going to let our attendees throw in some questions. I always have a few to kind of get the ball rolling. But I know when I'm talking to students who are at this point trying to learn a little bit more about different programs, you addressed um, all of the different crossover areas, right, that data science kind of um, encapsulates, which is awesome and really helpful for our students because sometimes I think they are unsure. And we always say, hey, it's okay if you're unsure if you have three or four different areas that you're thinking about. And one of the questions that comes up for a lot of students is, if I pick data science or I pick computer science, how easy is it to switch or combine or kind of mesh? And what does that flexibility look like? So I don't know if, if you guys wanna weigh in on, on kind of that advice, almost the advising piece of it, if students are a little bit unsure of what they wanna focus on. Yeah, you've heard enough from me. I think they'll take it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Say, I would, instead of giving the advising, I would have Miranda respond. <laughs> she can, she lived it. So she could I, I, I did live it. Um, so as I mentioned before, I was an undergrad. I graduated last year and I came into WPI as a biotechnology major and then immediately switched over to computer science, was a computer science major for a year then switched over to math science, was a math science major, 
for a year. And at that point, WPI announced that they had a data science undergraduate program that my year would be able to be the first to officially graduate with. And I said, well, that's fantastic. I've basically built myself a data science degree um, unofficially. So I just have to take a few more classes. Here I am a senior taking all of the data science 1000 classes um, to fulfill my requirements. Um, but it's absolutely, there's so much overlap between computer science, math, even if you just happen to take some electives to figure out what you want to do, all of that will count. So I only lost one credit in terms of something that didn't count, and I still managed to graduate in four years plus. I did the BSMS program, which means that um, I started counting um, graduate classes at the end of my junior year. Um, and I also work a full-time job. So my fifth year, I work full-time and I'm finishing the master's. So it's entirely possible that to like not know what you want to do, do other things and still be able to graduate on time. Absolutely. Awesome. I know that is usually a really huge relief for students to hear because they get a little nervous that they have to commit right away. But I we try to say there's a lot of crossover, so it's awesome to hear that experience. Um, Miranda, I'm actually going to pick on you for another question if you have a moment, but just to talk more about some, you guys talk a lot about the projects and that's a popular question, as you know, so you gave some awesome examples. I don't know, uh, Miranda, if you want to share some of the things that you're working on for projects or have done. Sure. So I've spent the last two years working on machine learning for mental health, uh, which is a project that Professor Rinnensteiner has led and advised. Um, and this started with a data collection that I did um, as a senior during my um, MQP or major qualifying project. And with the data set that I gathered and analyzed as an undergrad, I was able to use that data to run my um, to run my graduate work. So more specifically, what I do is we have data, uh, we have um, audio prompts that were collected on a mobile device uh, that people answered questions and recorded themselves. All of these audio recordings are labeled with depression and anxiety scores from a questionnaire that they filled out. And what we're doing is we're using um, deep learning models. It's, um, it's a combination of text learning models and um, audio learning models to do um, classification to determine if we can use these audio prompts to predict whether or not someone's depressed or anxious. Um, so that is what I'm working on. And there's been prior research. This is probably the fifth or sixth year of this project growing. It started like before I even came to WPI and it's been just been growing because you know, mental health is so important. And so this is actually a really interesting project to see um, something in a completely like health field getting combined with data science and deep learning and machine learning models and visualization and analytics. So um, it's very interesting. And I know different members on our team have done things with like text and call logs and other data that we collected in demographics and stuff like that. So there's so many different areas that you can go with data science, even if you think it's so far out of data science, it's it can probably be involved somehow. Awesome. I would say I would say Miranda is like the perfect example of a student that likes different things, a variety of different things, so that she doesn't want to only focus mass or only computation, everything computation. So it, it's an example why data science is kind of lies at the intersection of these different fields and let you learn enough about them and then apply them for a goal. And so that's exactly what Miranda is doing. So I think it's kind of demonstrates to you that if you are, want to do something practical, but also leverage enough computational skills and build those up, but know the foundation, the mass foundation, that when you make a recommendation or a decision that you can say, yeah, this is well founded rather than, yeah, that tool does this, but I don't know. Can I trust it or not trust it? You have to have some foundation in the statistics to be able to do that reliably. So, it, so Miranda is kind of demonstrating to you that sweet spot where she sits that has all the different type of skills coming together. And then answer, answering, aiming to answer impactful questions, actual questions that matter. 
Yeah, yeah, that's excellent. Thank you for sharing that, Miranda. I will throw it back out there to our friends who are in attendance here. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them right in the Q&A. You've got a wealth of knowledge here to answer all of the questions that you might be thinking about. Um, the other question that I can put out there that I think sometimes comes up too is for students, um, you know, worrying about is there any, you know, is there any additional prep work that if they're thinking something in data science and you, you talk about kind of that that math foundation, is there any additional prep work that they need prior to coming to WPI? We know in the admissions process, we want them to be, you know, at least through pre-calculus, maybe they've done calculus, right? But in terms of them coming in here, outside of that, is there anything else that they really need? We always say, no, we're gonna teach you a lot of it, but are there any recommendations from your end that maybe you would suggest? Mm -hmm. I can, I think Miranda might have, because you've taken the classes, I can just take a shot in the dark. <laughs> sure. So in addition to, you know, changing my major a bunch of times and kind of figuring out what I wanted to do, I didn't come in with a lot of AP credits. Um, and I started in Calc 1 and I started in the basic, um, like the introduction to computer science class. So from that perspective, I started, you know, from ground one. I mean, yes, I took calculus in high school, um, but it was something where I really needed the refresher. Just I'd forgotten a lot of it and I really wanted to get my foundations. Um, so that is absolutely there for you. Um, I think that many of the professors, especially the lower level professors, are really good at making sure you get the information you need to take follow up classes. One of the nice things about the WPI curriculum, as we mentioned, it's seven week terms. But a lot of times what this means is you'll take like part one of a class in the first seven weeks and then part two of the class. They'll have different names. Um, but for example, I took introduction to um, computer science in a term and then the next term I took object oriented programming. So I used that basic knowledge that I took that I learned in the first seven weeks and applied it to an actual like language like Java in the second um, week. And the same goes for the calculus classes or statistics or linear algebra um, and all of those classes. So I definitely think, you know, you were obviously accepted to WPI and WPI sees great potential in all of you. Um, so I, you've already done great work. Um, and so really, even if you aren't starting in calculus for, or had, you know, you don't have any computer science knowledge, you will absolutely be able, you'll be okay and you'll be able to excel in a data science degree as I have. <laughs> and so I wanna add that um, exactly that, you don't have to do anything um, or you could do as much as you would want. So because students can jump in at any level. So we have students that start from Calc 1, Calc 2 and go all the way through. If you'll teach them all the basics but we have some students that are insane and they come in, they want to take grad classes the first semester. We strongly discourage them, but some of them do it anyways. Um, and they all end up in a similar place when they're done. Or maybe some of them move more towards research if they start earlier. But so basically, I would say don't, I wouldn't worry about it, but do whatever you're most interested in. In fact, if you come refreshed, ready to go, that's more important than trying to work really hard in the summer to get yourself maximally ready. Because you will naturally be led through the curriculum and you can find your path here. And it's not as important to make sure that you are more ready than you are. By having been accepted, it means you have sufficient background to make it. And that's all that matters. Yeah, I like the way you said that. I think that's true, right? Like take the summer to just kind of get ready, you know, relax, refresh, rejuvenate. It's been a long year. Yeah, I think that's great advice. <laughs> Um, I did see a question pop up in the Q&A, um, and it's, if I choose not to attend WPI, can I still attend the Women in Data Science events? Which is a great question. <laughs> yeah, so the, the answer is yes, we would love you to attend, but let, attend WPI, but the event that we run every um, March, like March 5th or so, is an event that's run concurrently about 200 sites across um, the world, actually, across the United States and also across the world that run this Women Data Science event. Everybody features their own local community and their own local speakers. 
um, to sort of get to know others, learn about career paths and opportunities. Um, but you are very welcome to attend our events. So the events are publicly announced, now open to anybody. And in fact, we love to have students participate. Hopefully, this coming year it will be face to face and no longer online or hybrid. And then it makes more sense for people to attend that are within some sort of driving distance, two hours or less. Sometimes we have people come from three hours far apart. But it's really meant for the New England um, local area. So no matter what place you choose, you're very welcome to attend. That's great. That's great. Um, I appreciate that you guys talked about um, the level of flexibility. I think that's good to hear because I think that's something else that students kind of worry about is, you know, like Miranda talking about your experience changing majors or talking about the, you know, it's okay, whatever you bring with you is great, we'll work with you, we'll help you pick and choose the classes. I think that's um, good reiteration. Um, I'm being mindful of time, so I just wanna reach back out again um, for those of you that are with us today. If you have any additional questions, um, please feel free to ask us um, or drop them in that Q&A. Like I said, if there's anything else um, you're thinking about, we are here and we are happy to help. I don't know if there are any other comments or um, things that we were thinking about that maybe we didn't say yet that we wanted to talk about, you know, I think uh, that quick, I think and maybe this is a good one for you, Miranda, but a lot of students will say, well, how did you end up choosing WPI, right? You were in this position shortly, right? A few years ago. So what, what for you helped you make that decision? Um, absolutely. So at the time, I think my decision was made probably a little bit differently than many of you because I was looking for a school that had bioinformatics, which when I applied to schools five going on six years ago, um, can't believe it's been that long. Um, I And that's exactly it. You're going to get through college and be like, oh my goodness, how did I get here? <laughs> um, but I was looking for a school that had bioinformatics. And at the time, there was a small number that had really good bioinformatics programs. And that just kind of spiraled, in, spiraled into the fact that WPI is a great um, STEM school and has just a variety of classes and electives that you can take. And so it gave me the opportunity to, you know, take different classes and discover what it was that I wanted to do. Also, the project based learning was a huge driver for me and the fact that it's a smaller school. Um, just the kind of how I am and my preferences, I wouldn't have done well in a big school. I do, I've done better in a small school. Um, and so that was also one of my reasons that in the project-based learning was absolutely huge for me being able to succeed. Awesome, thank you for sharing that, okay. All right, well, we have a quiet crew tonight, or you guys are just <laughs> very thorough. I actually think it's that you guys are very thorough <laughs> with your information. I was taking notes the whole time. Um, well, being mindful of time, um, certainly we can hang out for another minute or so, but I didn't know if you, um, if anyone, if you wanted to offer um, either you, Lane or Alka, if you guys had any closing comments that you wanted to say to our visitors while they're here before we let everyone go. I didn't know if there's anything else you wanted to make sure we said before we signed off for the evening. Yeah, I would just do some, some practical advice. I, I like the question about like, how could you prepare um, and I, I'm a big believer in, in you know, kind of doing self-study on your own. Uh, I think one thing that I see again and again in data science are these computational notebooks like Python and R. And to, to be honest, the sooner you, you get comfortable with those, I think the more fun the program can be. I would have loved to have had that. I would have gotten so much more out of my undergraduate degree if, I, if these actually existed and I could have used them to explore concepts in math and computer science. There really is an exciting technology space. There's uh, you know, tons of things around that. So just to be clear, we're talking about computational notebooks. If you put that in for Python and R, uh, just figuring out how to be comfortable in that kind of environment um, is a nice practical step. Learn how to use pandas. It's going to be your best friend in data science. Yeah, for R, I would say dplyr, but sure, pandas. That's the, that's the one people use in Python. Awesome. Awesome. 
Well, this was a great session. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. We're tuning on in. Um, I want to thank all of my presenters. Thank you to you three for joining me tonight. Otherwise, this was a lot more exciting with you guys. If it was just me, it'd be really boring. <laughs> so, thank you guys for being here. And again, to our visitors, if you guys have questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, and we have all the contact information as well in the admissions office. If you can't remember who you saw, we've recorded everything. It'll go up on our website. But if you have questions, always feel free to reach out. And I would just like to say, you know, best of luck in your decision-making process. Um, we obviously would love to have all of you here at WPI, but we know you're all fantastic students who will do fantastic things wherever you end up. So good luck. And thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank <laughs> Thanks, everyone.